Well, just uh, excited for our guys. Um, you know, for me as a head coach, probably one of the more enjoyable uh, days of the year that doesn't involve a game, right? Just to uh, know where you met these guys. Some of these guys have been in, you know, since I got here. Some of these guys have been in here just a year. And uh, whatever the case, to see them have this day, to have this opportunity. Um, uh, going back to my college career, right, I remember pro day and uh, made an impression on the Seahawks to give me an opportunity to last for six days, but it was a good, good week. Um, so I always just think that perspective of the opportunity that's here today and we literally set up a day. I think if you talk to some of these scouts and some of these coaches that are here, we try to do the best in the country at this day. Um, and it's kind of our day that we can give back to our players to make sure it's as good as they possibly can. So excited for all these guys and a couple more things ahead of them. Open it's, up for questions. Seems like Tip and Casey are making the most of this process. Just what did you see the development of those two, especially the last year? Yeah, you know, unique story. So Tip, um, when we got here, was a 6'5", 230-pound walk-on tight end from South Dakota. And I remember the meeting I had with him. I I was just blown away with kind of like, A, what kind of person he was, but that frame, right? Like he kind of drooled. I remember Tank talking about him. And if I remember right, he went from like 230 to like 245, like in a, in a heartbeat. And I remember that first spring game, he kind of uh, went out to spring game and, and there was like literally a play where he didn't move. The ball was snapped and he didn't move. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? And he's like, coach, I've never been in that environment. I'm like, there's 8,000 people, uh, you know, but – um, to think about that moment to where he is today and, and you know, I probably had more contact uh, from teams around the league since the combine than, than any player in my coaching career. Because I think from a year ago uh, to where we are today, he, you know, going into his, this past year, I really thought he'd be back for one more year. Uh, I knew there was going to be a conversation, but I thought, hey, he's probably not going to be along far enough. But about midway through the year, I was like, hey, we better maximize this guy while we got him because um, I think it's going to be his last rodeo. And, He's done it. Casey Washington, um, I always make reference, you know, when I was uh, the head coach of Wisconsin, uh, Ted Thompson, who's no longer with us, uh, always used to ask me, like, you know, like, who's the guy that you know what you know and we don't that you would, you know, say might make a difference. And, and uh, Casey was one of those guys. I told the group, I go, hey, if he had another year with us, if he uh, had been with us one more uh, year, I think this thing would be a different game, right? And uh, I think he's doing a great job of playing himself into a very draftable status. You know, uh, Kendrick Green came up to me and he's like, Coach, every time I come back, I'm more impressed with everything that's, that goes on here, right? Like, he was a guy that I tried to recruit to stay one more year because I think we could have changed his life, uh, you know, even though he drafted high. I think he could have been even higher. But um, to hear a former player say those things and where it's at, like, um, get excited. Obviously, everybody gets caught up in the, in, the, in the moment. But I do know from where we came to where we are today, I think our first year there might have been 14 or 16 teams here and had some good players, but now we have every team represented, several position coaches, um, just the, the amount of growth that we've had. Uh, now, for me, it also upsets me, right, because I know we lot of, lost a lot of really good players that uh, this is the last time they'll probably be on our turf, right? And, and uh, that moment is great for them, but it's also a great indicator of what we got to do. Last year, you went to Kansas City, obviously. Uh, what's the plan this year? Is that still up there? Well, I'm not going to Kansas City because the draft's no, not there, really right? right. Um, yeah, kind of a work in progress. Right. Uh, you know, Johnny... Uh, uh, you know, Cooter, whatever the status ends up being, I think he'll be the first guy off the board for us, right? So uh, a little bit plays off where he's at. But um, the one thing I realized, and I give Pat Pearson a lot of credit for this, like he, he had uh, kind of come to me last year before the draft three or four months out and said, hey, I think we better start planning around what we want to do on draft weekend. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'd had a bunch of first rounders in my life, but I'd never thought about going to where they are, right? And um, it opened my eyes in Kansas City, you know, to go through that moment with Spoon is something that I'll never forget. Uh, I know it's a memorable moment for him, but for me as a head coach, just to to see that environment and then to, to go and get to be at draft day when, when you know, Chase's number was called, right? And uh, I'm sorry, Sydney's number was called first. And, uh, you know, we sent some guys down to, you know, where, where uh, uh, some of the other guys were at, Kirby the year before and then, then Quan last year, right? So it's just... It's a really cool thing because I think it also shows more than ever what our program can be and what they can produce. Uh, I think Isaiah Adams, I think about my first year, I remember seeing him on film. I kind of liked him, but I'm like, hey, I don't know. And then we went during our bye week, Bart and I flew to Garden City and had a chance to see him physically and, and, and hear the coaches talk about him and saw some individual drill tape that we really, really liked, offered him a scholarship and, and obviously ended up getting him. But then after two weeks of spring ball, I'm like, okay, there's something special here, right? And uh, to know we've had him for two years and the amount of uh, value that's been going to be added to his name now, uh, to know that really came since we've been here with him, that's pretty cool. I would think, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Bob. I would think like with Spoon last year, you probably meant a lot to him that you were there. 
mean, they can just usually have that conversation, kind of what it was for him to see you there. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, that year in general was a very special moment in, in Spoon's life. Um, uh, so I, I can't speak for him, but for me, it was very special to see that. You, you realize that, you know, young men that are put in that position literally have a 24-hour window where their life literally dramatically changes, right? And, and, and to see that in its real time, um, to see his mom's reaction, you know, uh, just a, a lot of value to that. And now I'm getting older, right? So I've been able to witness this and now see the back end of it, right? See guys who were drafted high and, you know, I, I remember... My first ever first rounder was, you know, my first year was Joe Thomas, right? And, and now to come full circle that he just got inducted to the first round battle Hall of Fame, you kind of have seen what his life has, has done since that moment, and it's just really cool to watch. Coach, what would, what would you tell NFL scouts that are thinking about drafting Isaiah Williams, both as a player and the, char yeah. the character piece also? You know, um, first off, Isaiah's intangibles for what he brings away from the game. You can't get any higher. I literally told them that today that, like, if you truly want to check the box in every category, then that's what he is, right? And then from a player standpoint, even though maybe at the combine, I think the time was a 4.64. I know he broke the 4.6 today. Uh, I just told him, I said, if you throw him a flat route and a guy that runs 4.4 at the combine is chasing him, he'll outrun him every time. And that's just what I think he is. I think he's a true competitor. Um, you throw the shoulder pads on and put the ball in play, and very few people are going to catch him. So it takes people to look past what they see on the watch and see what they see on the film. And if you do that, I think you'll get a special player. Yeah. What are you hearing on him and just maybe their beliefs still of what they saw as a guard? I think uh, honesty is the best policy, right? Mom and dad taught it when you were little, but uh, we moved him to right tackle because we needed a desperate uh, uh, situation that we needed to uh, solidify that right tackle position. We thought he gave us the best option. He didn't complain, argue, disrupt, um, and, you know, especially after some games where I know it was frustrating for him. He just continued to improve, worked with Coach Miller every day, and I think he'll truly get rewarded now because it shows the ability and the value that he brings. Uh, like I told this group today, I said literally Isaiah Adams can probably play from left tackle to right tackle. I'm, I think he's a valuable left guard, right guard, uh, but he, he's done you know snaps every day at practice. I'm not saying he's going to be a starting center in the league, but he might be a backup on game day when you only have one center that's going to the game. Uh, for sure, if you have two and you got him a guard, you now got three deep at center in case something drastic happens. So the value of offensive linemen that can play multiple positions is huge. We asked you about the transfer additions you've made so yeah. far. You bring seven guys. In. Yeah. What do you think you, you got in that group? Uh, that's right. We were saving that for Monday, right? You, you sneak attacking me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to forget some, but like you know, I know going at the end of last year, about probably by week on, like I began to watch a number of players every day. The guys that said they were going in the portal, or they were in the portal. There's all kinds of different terminologies, but we we specifically wanted to target certain positions. Uh, see how they unfolded. I think for us on the offense side of the ball, ball been very impressed with Cole Rusk. I mean, he's just been a guy that came in and ran extremely well. His body has literally changed right in front of us uh, to see where he's at. J.C. Davis has been very impressive, uh, a tackle that we think will pigeonhole in at that left side, but really impressive. And Melvin Priestley has been super impressive uh, athletically what he can do. He's another guy probably like Isaiah, probably a guard type, but he can literally play tackle to tackle. Um, super high football. Like it's, he's a he's St. Louis kid. It's very, very, he loves the game and what it is, right? Um, uh, anybody else on offense? Huh? Oh, yeah, Kevin Wigginton. Uh, literally probably one of the first guys I ever saw, right, just because we had had connections to his high school. I had a rumor that he wanted to be engaged, so we had, I had evaluated him and listed him as a top priority at the interior guard position. Um, uh, he could probably play left or right. He's actually done some snap at center. Uh, super incredibly impressive family. Mom's a New Jersey State, uh, New Jersey uh, uh, um, Supreme Court uh, uh, judge. His dad's a lawyer. Just a really impressive family. Been a good fit really quick early, uh, early on. So, uh, defense uh, up front, all three guys. Uh, you know, we got Dennis Briggs, who was the latest addition, was a Florida State guy that we did get official clearance that he's officially approved. So that was a huge NCA win for us. Uh, 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 Sledge has been uh, a very impressive dude ever since he came to campus. Really like what he brings, his size, his hustle. Uh, I think some of these guys are getting introduced to what winter conditioning is all about so I think it's uh, for Sledge especially was like a new eye-opening experience for him but uh, and then Anthony uh, is just uh, just super impressive great family dad's a self-made guy in Pittsburgh and, and dad was a hooper mom was a hooper I think and he he really didn't I think play high school football maybe it was a sophomore junior year and uh, he's been at every – I know that our basketball team is pretty good. There's no bigger fan than Ant, right? Ant, uh, he was asking me for tickets the other night against Purdue. I said, bro, I can't give, do that. And he was crushed. Uh, but 
he, he just loves Illinois, what it is. And, and um, those three guys, I think, are going to help us in the media. Uh, Daniel Brown is a guy that I think he might have been my first junior college offer of the year. And I saw him early on. I was super impressed with his twitch, his, his motor, his ability to bend. Um, so we offered him. He was during a bye week, the first guy I visited. I, I kind of personally recruited him and just said, this is what I wanted to do. And um, led the nation in sacks. Just, uh, you know, everywhere I went, they're like, hey, you're getting that Daniel Brown kid. Uh, I said, yeah. So um, really impressed with him. Um, who else? Is that his on defense? Yeah, I, I knew I was going to forget somebody. Well, we just, you know, like Briggs, we didn't really get in, get in on until after the, you know, the bowl game. And, you know, Randy Shannon is a co-DC there. I just kind of reached out to them, and I knew Florida State didn't really want to lose them, but they, they also understood the growth and development. So um, super impressed. Den Dennis, um, you know, since he's gotten here, has literally ch physically changed his body very, very well, and super impressed with the way he's working. Chris, is there a timeline on when you'd like to fill Charlie's assistant spot that last Yeah, um, I'll fill it when I fill it, but, but right. it's definitely been – I kind of was, when he left, like I literally had linebacker coaches on campus and I get a call from the Giants and it was kind of funny. They called me a couple days before because they were hiring another one of my former coaches that was at another NFL team and they were asking me about him. I talked to Dave Ball and then he called me like four days later. He goes, hey, I got a question, but I don't think you're going to like this one as much. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they want to talk to Charlie and of course I don't want to deter anybody from things that are in front of him. Charlie did an incredible job for us, so he interviewed and it was over in about two hours. So. Um, then that kind of opened up, but I was literally going out of town that next week. I just wanted to take a breath and kind of gather ourselves. So uh, I think we'll have somebody, if not by the end of this weekend, early next week. But we're gone next week anyway. So um, whoever it ends up being, we'll get them in here early. Uh, Aaron and I and JMO will talk to them, work with them before before the uh, before, yeah before uh, we start spring ball. Along those lines, just have, I haven't talked to you about Justin and Archie. Yeah. What are those two? How did that come about? And what did they add? To yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, Obviously, uh, uh, the linebacker position was, you know, I, I obviously had a DB opening and an LB opening very quickly, right? Gibby um, and I had, had, have I talked about Gibby ever? Yeah, okay. So Gibby was, you know, quick, easy in. And then uh, Arch uh, really um, kind of came through the business. Um, there's there's a guy that he worked with at Houston that I'm very close with. Uh, Kevin Sumlin called me. Um, somebody was on the phone with me. He said, hang up the phone and call him and offer him a job right now. So I didn't do that. But I brought him in on an interview, and he, he was just very impressive, just super – uh, a, highly intelligent, uh, great personal skills. Uh, uh, the linebackers, you know, have made an immediate gravitation towards them. Just kind of a different uh, uh, approach to, you know, the same hopefully kind of results. Um, he's had uh, not only valuable experience as a player, but also coach everywhere he went. He kind of can been boom, boom, boom up. And uh, very excited about him and, and on the field and off the field and recruiting, right? Just a really, really dynamic guy. Uh, step, I've actually kind of a weird story, right? So when I left Arkansas, he was the wide receiver coach that came in with uh, the guy that replaced me, and I began to hear about this guy a lot, right? Through Barry, through my former players that I would talk to, uh, went into the league, you know, the three years after that, and I watched their receivers. Some of the guys that I had recruited, right, I saw their development. Um, some of the guys that were on the roster, their development, and when I talked to these guys, they would all talk about Justin Step. And then uh, I saw him when he left Arkansas and he went to South Carolina. I knew how much of a uh, uh, say reaction that got out of their people, right? And, and then one of my best, one of my really good friends uh, was the tight ends coach of South Carolina. He's now the head coach of Murray State, but um, he called me immediately when he found out I was interested in Step. Uh, I, when, I, when the job opened up, I had a bunch of people reach out to me, but um, Barry and I both knew of Justin, and, and, and uh, so he was a guy that literally came up on our list right away, brought in a couple guys, but uh, I think if you talk to our guys, I mean, I, I don't know if I've had a coach since I've been here that has come in and made his immediate impact with a room, uh, you know, because like Pat Bryant, you know, I was a little worried about, oh, gee, was obviously a fantastic coach, right? So to, to, f to replace a coach of that caliber, you're always very cautious about who you're bringing in. And, and um, the reaction has been unbelievable. I was with Isaiah Williams the other day, and I was just talking to him, and he said, Coach, he goes, the guys are really buzzing about Step. And I said, yeah. So um, uh, ironically, uh, Step had recruited a couple of, he recruited PB. Um, you know, Step has a twin brother, the tight end coach of Cincinnati, and that kind of throws guys for a loop because they think they met him before and they haven't. Uh, but uh, literally, there's an, obviously a local kid that we're recruiting, a wide receiver that um, we said was priority one since the day he walked in. And I literally get a text from Step every day on something that we can hit him with that day, right? So he's just a relentless recruiter. It's pretty impressive. All right, thanks, guys.